Hello everybody and welcome to the second video on tools and equipment in the kitchen. If you haven't checked out the first one, please check the description and link and check that one out after this episode. Today we're going to be covering large equipment in the kitchen. So let's get started. All right, so obviously I'm not going to be pulling out equipment for this because it's just a lot it's just too much and a lot of this equipment is large and a lot of this equipment i don't have because they are huge things in professional kitchens on this list so let's start the rundown meat grinders are used for grinding meat that can be used in a wide variety of applications including making sausages if you have a KitchenAid mixer you can buy attachments that assist with this standalone grinders exist but they may only be cost effective if you do a lot of meat grinding a blender is used for blending liquids and soft ingredients, sometimes chopping ice and making smoothies. Blenders can come in up to a 68 ounce size. Next is food processors. Food processors are used for consistent processing of fruits and vegetables. They are sold for home use and for professional kitchens and they come in a variety of sizes. Then there's an immersion blender which also comes in a variety of sizes. Immersion blenders are tall narrow handheld blenders with variable speeds that can be immersed into a pot or deep container to chop or puree ingredients. Some come with attachments such as a whisk and other attachments. I have a couple immersion blenders. One of them came with a small food processor, which is nice for when you just need to process a small amount of things like uh, nuts or zest or anything like that. Some also come with cutting disc attachments. The next two items are very much professional kitchen equipment and I wouldn't expect anybody to have ever heard of them and they're not in all professional kitchens. First, we have the vertical chopping machine, also known as the VCM, which shreds cheese, mixes doughs, blends, and does large batch mixing. It's used for large quantity processing. A food chopper or buffalo chopper is a bowl chopper or food cutter, a machine that chops or emulsifies food by rotating a bowl under spinning blades. It's used for large quantity processing. Next, we have a food or meat slicer, which is generally used in professional kitchens, but there are some home versions available. A mandolin is a slicing tool that must be used with caution. You can slice julienne, make potato chips and french fries in a range of thicknesses with a mandolin. You should always use a chainmail glove when using a mandolin. If you've never used the mandolin, you must use chainmail. You could literally cut your fingers, just like slice them right off. It's a very dangerous piece of kitchen equipment. So always use it with caution. Then we have a pasta maker. A pasta maker is a medium sized kitchen tool designed to simplify the processing of rolling and cutting all kinds of doughs to make fresh pasta, such as fettuccine, lasagna, ravioli, egg noodles, and tagliatini. They are available in mechanical and automatic versions. You can also get a pasta maker attachment for your KitchenAid mixer. Then there's the standing mixer, which comes in a variety of styles, sizes and brands. In a commercial professional kitchen, they come in sizes from 20 to 40 quarts and so forth. The bowl is locked into place much like your mixer at home. It has beater, whip, paddle and dough hook attachments to be used with a variety of batters and doughs. It has varying speeds. The tabletop models are generally five quart or lower in capacity. Okay, as mentioned previously, you can buy attachments for your home stand mixer and those include attachments for slicing, shredding, grinding, milling, making pasta, stuffing sausages. The largest stand mixer for professional kitchens actually come in up to 50 gallons or 189 liters. Next, we're gonna move on to kettle steamers and kettle steamers are also something you generally won't use in a home kitchen, but would definitely be used in a professional kitchen. The first kind of kettle steamer is a steam jacketed kettle, which circulates steam through the walls of the jacket, providing heat. Steam jacket kettles are generally used for making stocks, soups, and sauces. Tilting kettle, also known as a Swiss brazier, a tilting skillet, or a tilting fry pan, is a large and shallow pan used for braising, stewing, and sauteing large quantities at a time. Most have a lid that allows for steaming. A pressure steamer or cooker heats water under pressure, allowing it to reach above boiling, which is 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. It is controlled by automatic timers and cannot be opened without the pressure being released. An instant pot is just a modern pressure cooker. Pressure cookers way back in the day when they were first invented were very, very dangerous. 
Do you think it's trying to tell us something? I hope you like chicken and saffron rice served with chocolate sauce. It's an East Indian classic, my dear. Three months ago, I couldn't scramble eggs. And grew out of favor. Instant Pots, I believe, came on the market in 2010, and they are a safer alternative to a pressure cooker. Traditional pressure cookers are often used in canning. Now, an Instant Pot is a very safe, modern pressure cooker. Convection steamer is a piece of equipment where steam is generated in a boiler and then piped into the cooking chamber and vented over food. The pressure does not build up, so it can be opened at any time. A deep fat fryer comes in gas or electric versions and is used for holding fat for deep frying. Generally, they are temperature controlled. They include wire mesh baskets to easily remove fried food from the liquid fat. Some models are self-straining. Others have to be manually drained and strained to remove food particles from fat. There are plenty of home versions of these available. Now, if you're looking to get a deep fryer for your home, from my experience of using a home version, both for home use and for catering, always get something that you can just strain the oil into a container below. It is the easiest cleanup that you can imagine. It's still not without its difficulty because oil gets on everything and is very hard to clean. But if you're gonna buy a deep fryer, I suggest one that filters the oil for you. Then there are ranges and ovens, which are probably the most common piece of equipment in a kitchen. And pretty much everybody in a developed world has a range or an oven. The top is usually referred to as the range and the part below that is the oven. <laughs> there are a number of ranges and oven types so I'm just going to touch on some of the most popular ones. The open burner range is a great style burner and heat is easily adjusted. A flat top range is made of thick plates of cast iron or steel over a heat source. A flat top range provides even and consistent heat but does not allow for quick adjustments. A ring top range is a flat top with plates whose opening can be adjusted by removing or wiring to adjust heat. An induction cooktop relies on magnetic attraction between the cooktop and specific cookware. And then there's the toaster oven, which is pretty self-explanatory. A convection oven contains a fan that forces hot air to circulate around the food. Some come with a steam capability. Conventional or deck oven is an oven where the heat source is located in the bottom beneath the deck or floor of the oven. Heat is conducted in the cavity. This type of oven is often used for roasting. A combi oven is a combination steamer and convection oven with different settings like steam mode, hot air convection mode, or heat and steam mode. Combi ovens are most commonly found in professional kitchens. A microwave oven uses electricity to generate microwave radiation. It cooks and heats food quickly, and some models double as convection ovens. Then there's a panini press, which has heat sourced on both sides and is used for making panini sandwiches. There are a number of other styles because like I said, there is just almost an endless amount of things that you can buy for a kitchen. Other styles of ovens or ranges include pizza, a rotary spit, a waffle maker, conveyor ovens like those used in making donuts, uh, rotating decks. If you want more information on the difference between gas and electric stoves, please check out the description below. There's a link to a video I did recently on gas versus electric. Grills have a heat source that is below the rack while a broiler has a heat source that is above the rack. There is a special piece of equipment in the professional kitchen known as a salamander. A salamander has its heat source above the rack and is used to finish or glaze foods such as French onion soup or put color on the top of a dish. They come in gas and electric. Another piece of the kitchen equipment is a smoker. A smoker treats items with cool or hot smoke, generally following brining or curing. A smoker is used for meats, fish, and cheeses. It has hooks or racks. Smokers come in a variety of sizes and materials and heat sources. And then there are dehydrators, which remove moisture from food items generally meant to be preserved. This includes fruits, vegetables, and meats. Dehydrators come in commercial sizes as well as many different home sizes. Finally, we have refrigerators. And there are a bunch of different kinds of refrigerators and they include walk-ins, which usually are large enough to accommodate roller carts and cooks. Reach-ins, 
which are more like a home fridge. They may be single or double. In professional settings, they may have pass-through doors for easy access from both sides of the fridge. Then there are on-site drawer or under cabinet reach-ins. Usually these are used for line foods to be held in order to eliminate unnecessary walking during peak periods of time. Then there are portable refrigerators, which come in cart form and display refrigerators, which are used in the dining room to display desserts and salads and in delis to display already prepared things. Now there are a number of cool new products for the home kitchen that I want to talk briefly about. I'm guessing that you will increasingly find these in professional kitchens, but they include such things as like the Instapot and air fryers. So these new pieces of equipment that may or may not be in a professional in kitchen include a sous vide or a low temp cooking immersion circulator, an air fryer, which is just simply a convection oven, an instant pot, which is just an electric pressure cooker, a food vacuum sealer, which seals food into a bag by sucking the air out. Now there are two pieces of equipment that I recently found out about that I'm very excited about. One is too expensive and the other I'm hopefully going to buy by the end of this year. First thing is a Thermomix. Apparently a Thermomix does everything. Um, I've provided a link in the description below if you want to go take a look at it. But from what I understand, it can do everything from chopping to kneading to steaming. So uh, I will tell you, based on what I looked at, the price is at about $1,500 for the unit. The second machine is from a company called Lavoil, and it's an infusion machine. So it's used for making infused oils, infused vinegars. And from what I understand, it's very popular for infusing ingredients with flour. And I don't mean baking flour. So for large processing equipment, there are a couple things that I recommend outside of, you know, like a stove and a fridge and, you know, microwave and all the things that you generally people have in their kitchen. The items that you may not have that I recommend include an immersion blender, a food processor, a stand blender, a standing mixer, and that's about it. So that's it for the large equipment. If you haven't watched the small hand tools and small equipment video, check out the link in the description. The next video will be pots and pans and kitchen molds. So make sure to come back for that. Thank you for watching my video today. And as always, have a wonderful day.